Suppose f of x equals 2x plus 6. So we're given this function, and then we're asked to find h if f of h equals 4. What's this asking us? Well, it's asking us to find the number, the, the input, so this h is going to be a number, so it's find the number such that when we input that number as x into this function, so when we input this number into this function, when it's evaluated, we get 4. So what it's actually asking for here is an input rather than an output. Usually we face questions, or up until now we face questions where it says, you know, f of 2 equals something or other. There they've given us the input and we've got to evaluate the output. But here they've given us the output, the output is 4, and they've asked us to evaluate what input is associated with that output. In other words, what we need to do is we need to find the number such that when that number is substituted into this function, the output is 4. So in order to go about solving this problem, it's good to note that we have, uh, let's consider what happens if we just substituted h without no x numerical value, just the variable into f of, in, into this function. So let's evaluate f of h according to this function. So here we get f of h, don't know what h is yet, equals, well, whenever we see x here, we're going to replace that with h. That's how we evaluate uh, a function. So here, f of h, that's going to equal 2 times h, so 2h, plus 6. Now we're also given that f of h equals 4. So here, f of h equals 4. So here we've got two different statements for f of h. And interestingly, on the right-hand side, neither of these, these right-hand side statements involve function notation. They're just normal variables. So what we can do here is we could say f of h equals 2h plus 6, also f of h equals 4. So that means that 2h plus 6 must equal 4, since these two expressions each equal f of h. So what we could do here is we could write 2h plus 6, well that equals f of h, and f of h equals 4. So let's make sure it looks like a 6. 2h plus 6 equals 4. Well now we're just find, asked to find h given this expression. And we know how to do that. What we could do is we could subtract 6 from both sides. So if we subtract 6 from both sides we get 2h equals 4 minus 6. And here 4 minus 6 is minus 2. And then if we divide both sides by 2 we're going to get h equals minus 1. And that's going to be our answer. What this says is if we substitute h equals minus 1 for, if we substitute um, minus 1 into this as an input for this function, then that's going to give an output of 4. And just to make sure that we're right, what this result says is that f of minus 1 equals 4. That's what this statement says, because here, if we substitute minus 1 in here, this, this is supposed to hold true. Well, we can evaluate that. Let's, let's just confirm that. Let's find f of minus 1, if we weren't given this statement down here, just with this function, let's find what f of minus 1 equals to. So here, whenever we see x, we're going to substitute that for minus 1. So here we get 2 times minus 1. So here it says 2x, instead we've got minus 1 for x, plus 6. Well, 2 times minus 1, that's minus 2. So positive times a negative is a negative. Plus 6, well... Uh, minus 2 plus 6, that's going to be 4. So sure enough, we have indeed proven that if we substitute minus 1 into this function, we do get 4. Thus, in order to, we, we, we've, we've found that this h value is indeed minus 1. Uh, now this has just been confirming this result, but if you're ever facing this sort of question, the easiest way to go about it is just to recognize that these two statements are equivalent. And so we can write an expression that just involves numbers and variables, and once we're there, we can just simplify that expression to find the value of h, or the value of the pronomial that you're given. But if you're always unsure, you can then plug this value back into the function and evaluate it just to make sure that this initial condition holds true.